If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am a dividend investor. I love dividends. It's all about dividends for me. And I recently did a few videos comparing dividends versus growth stocks, and you know where I sit. You know where I sit in that debate. I love dividends because I plan to live off of dividends. I love the cash flow. I love the alternatives, the flexibility that dividends give me. Even today, even though I don't have enough dividends to live off of, I've got a great stream of dividends coming in, and they just give me so much comfort and flexibility in my life. That being said, I get some great questions here all the time. I'm so thankful, so grateful for the questions. And one of the questions has kind of asked, hey, Ian, look, is there any scenario where you could see growth stocks being a better investment than dividend stocks? And most for myself, dividends are always going to win. That's what I do. For many investors out there, just speaking in general, I also believe that dividends are a great, great strategy. That being said, there is one, one scenario where I believe that growth stocks could just be a great fit, a great, great fit. And I know, I know I have a lot of folks here on my YouTube channel who are trying to determine, hey, do I go the dividend route or the growth route? Which one's better? Everyone is different. Everyone has different goals, different assumptions, different strategies. And there's no one right strategy in the stock market. Today, I want to share the one scenario, the one scenario where I think growth stocks could be better than dividend stocks. And maybe you fit into this camp. Maybe this is you. It's certainly not me. It's not me. But that being said, I can respect this. I understand this. And I can see that a lot of people would fall into this scenario. And so let's get started. Let's talk about when and why growth stocks could be better than dividend stocks. So welcome to the video today, everyone. I am so excited to have you here. By the way, we just surpassed 8,000 subscribers. I am so, so thankful and blessed. Thank you, thank you for the support. And if you like the video today, please don't forget to comment, subscribe, give me a like. All of that means the world to me. So as we progress through this scenario today, I need you to bear with me. I need you to stick with me. We're gonna need to start just with some assumptions. The first assumption is that for this scenario, the investor firmly believes that growth stocks are gonna outperform dividend stocks going forward. And it, they think, hey, it's 2018, things are really different now, growth stocks are where it's at. I'm talking about stocks like Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, that's where the growth is, and that's gonna to continue to be that way. Companies like Amazon, I personally disagree that um, growth stocks will outperform value stocks and dividend stocks going forward. The reason for this, the reason for that is I looked at this study by Bank of America and Merrill Lynch. They looked at 1926 going forward uh, for 90 years since 1926. And over those 90 years, on average, value stocks did 17% annual return, growth did 12.6. Now, mind you that Dividend growth investing, my strategy, it's somewhere in the middle. It's not a pure value play. I do some deep value investing. I'll link in the description below to a video about that. I do some deep value investing, but most of my investing, it's more in the middle. It's dividend growth investing. It's somewhere in the middle. That being said, I tend to believe this data, and um, that's one of my guiding principles is that over the long term, value dividend related companies tend to do better than growth. That being said, the assumption here for this one class of investor, this one type of investor where I think growth may be better than dividend is you disagree with me. You're like, hey, Ian, I don't care about the last 90 years. I don't care about 1926. I don't care about 1950, 1960, 1990. I care about now, 2018. And you know what, Ian? I think that, that dividends um, are going to be far outpaced by growth. Growth is just gonna do better going forward because hey, Ian, our world is changing. If that's you, you believe that assumption, you could fall into this persona where growth may make more sense. It's not me, but I'm trying to paint a picture here of where it may work. And look, I respect that. I understand where someone with that assumption is coming from. Moving on, you know my goals. My goals are around financial freedom, early financial freedom, flexibility, cash flow, income right now. If I want to tap into my dividends tomorrow, I have that opportunity. I can use them to pay bills even now. And so that's what I'm all about. However, the persona here of someone where growth investing may outpace and be better than dividend investing is completely different than me. This person 
is just looking at long-term capital appreciation. They're not looking at dividends. They just don't care if they receive a dividend in the short run. They're looking 20, 30 years out. I want a lot of capital appreciation. This person is also lurking, looking to work for a long time. Work most likely until a retirement age, like 65. And look, I love to work. And I will probably be working till 65 and even later. That being said, having an early financial freedom before I'm 65, uh, hopefully well before I'm 65, gives me options. And it gives me options to do a lot of things in life. And I love that. And that's why I love dividends. But the person in this persona, they don't, they don't care about that. They're okay just taking the reality that, hey, I'm going to be working, whether it's at a company or for myself, until I'm at a traditional retirement age. Again, it's not me. It's not me. But because, I, like I said, I will probably do this. But that said, I, I just love flexibility. I love flexibility and the opportunity to retire young if I want to or to pursue other passions, to do all kinds of things. Anyways, this investor also is just buy and hold. And this is important. This investor has the goal of buying and holding growth stocks and sitting on them for 20 or 30 years or more and not receiving dividends. Now, I've painted a picture in some of my other videos that a lot of growth stocks and growth investors are buy low, sell high. And they do this in a short amount of time. And I've even done this, by the way. I'll link in the description below. I uh, bought Bitcoin in 2017 and I sold most of it in 2017, some of it in 2018, but that was a short-term buy low, sell high growth strategy. And I think that's how most growth investors think out there. And I don't subscribe generally to that type of, of growth investing unless there's a really good opportunity like the Bitcoin one. In general, that's not for me. That strategy kind of puts me off. By contrast, the goal of the type of growth investing I'm talking about today, this one type of growth investing that I really respect and that I think could make sense for some people, it's different. It's buy and hold for 20 or 30 years. It actually has a lot of parallels to my dividend strategy. When I buy a dividend stock, I never intend to sell. Similarly, the person who falls into this persona where I'm trying to explain a growth investor who, who I think could, could make a lot of sense for some people, they're like me. They're not going to get the dividends, but they surely aren't selling. They're not trying to churn profits in the short run. So if you believe this assumption, if these goals, they kind of resonate with you, they make sense to you, let's go on. Growth investing, it might be for you. It might be the right thing. Moving on, I want to talk about growth versus dividends. And I'm painting a picture here in this scenario, in this persona, some of the pros and cons of growth versus dividends. Most of the pros here lie in the growth camp. If this is you, growth may make sense. Higher possible returns. We already talked about the assumption. We're assuming here that this, I don't believe this, by the way, but the person that subscribes to this model, they believe that going forward, growth stocks will continue the run they've had the last few years and they will outperform dividend stocks or value stocks, if you will. Again, dividends, I don't believe this because of the Bank of America study and just my own experience over 20 years and the types of returns I've been able to receive with dividend stocks, which have been great um, and oftentimes have beaten the S&P 500. Certainly this year, 2018 and going forward here, I don't know if that's me the case because it's been a, a little bit of a tough time for dividend stocks. That being said, I love it. I love it, love it, because as stock prices go down, starting yields go up. And if you've been following me, you know that I just buy for the dividend yield. I'm buying for an increasing stream of dividends over time because I never look to sell. I'm just buying for the cash flow. Anyways, that we're not talking about me here. We're talking about someone that believes they're assuming higher returns and growth. So obviously, growth beats dividends here because it's higher possible returns. Moving down, taxes. In this scenario, taxes are better for growth investors. Why? They're just buying and holding. There's no dividends. When I receive a dividend, a qualified dividend, I'm paying long-term capital gains on each of those. And by contrast, a growth investor, by foregoing the dividend, that money is just compounding at the company. And the, the investor is not paying taxes on it because again, they're holding for 20 or 30 years. So it's just compounding. Now, a tan tangent point here that I think is important. Do you trust these growth companies? to um, take good care of your money as a shareholder? Do you trust them not to throw extravagant parties, ha uh, spend it on executive bonuses, all kinds of things? If you, you generally trust the company, then again, this is, this is um, a pro. Personally, for me, 
I only invest in companies that I trust, but that being said, I sure like getting dividends because it's a sign of the company respecting me as a shareholder, and it's a sign of getting money off their hands into my pocket, which I always feel is safer. That said, let's put that aside. Growth stocks win here, and the reason that they win is because they're more tax advantageous for this investor, for the, not for someone that's buying low, selling high, and churning every few years, or even within a year. It's for the person that's buying low, selling high, but doing it over 30 plus years. So one other point here on taxes. This growth investor, this person that's holding for 30 years, when the 30 years are up, and they sell their stock, and they need to live off of that stock and sell the stock to pay their living expenses in retirement, they're gonna owe taxes. They're gonna owe capital gains taxes, long-term capital gains taxes. Obviously, as long as it's not in a tax advantage account, but if it's tax advantage account, growth investing and dividend investing, they're gonna be pretty similar. There's not gonna be a, um, a winner from a tax standpoint. So I'm talking about not tax advantage accounts. Now, by contrast, the dividend investor, let's say they hold 30 years. They're paying taxes all along on the dividends that are either being used to buy stuff or reinvested. But the principal, the core principle, when it comes time to retire 30 years out, the dividend investor doesn't have to sell. They can just hold that. So they can push out that tax event, delay those taxes, because they just don't need to use the principal because they're only living off the dividends. So looking at it through that lens, quite frankly, I would say that, uh, that dividend investing wins. But again, we're looking here not at myself, not at just the dividend side of things. We're looking at the growth side of things as well. And so I'd say on the taxes, maybe in this scenario, there are arguments that could be made that growth investing is better. Personally, when you look at all of the arguments, I'd say they're kind of even, but I can see why people would believe that it's, that it's uh, better, and I respect that. Here's another case. Do you believe that these stocks like Facebook, Apple, Google, Netflix, et cetera, Square, Amazon, they're the future. Do you believe that these disruptive technologies are the future? They're gonna overtake the um, status quo. If you do, growth stocks beat dividend stocks here potentially because um, dividend stocks tend to be more established companies. They tend to be less disruptive companies. That being said, I wanna share something today. Another stock, I'm gonna disclose another one today. I know you've been waiting to hear more of my stock positions. I own this company, Pfizer, healthcare company, pharmaceutical company, and uh, ticker symbol PFE. They just announced a $600 million capital raise uh, or investment, if you will, in the Pfizer Ventures Fund. They have an internal fund for developing new cures, new research, new medical advances, if you will. And so sometimes I think people discredit these blue chip companies as being old school, old style. But listen to me. Even with something like Pfizer that might sound like kind of a steady eddy company, they are investing and they just invested 600 million in terms of growing and finding new discoveries. And so in many ways, some of these blue chips on the dividend side, they are future oriented, very future oriented, just like the growth stocks. That said, a pure play growth stock like Apple, for example, they have to innovate. There's no status quo there, the 100% innovation. And so again, if you believe in innovation, you believe in the future disruption, you want to invest in that. In my opinion, growth could be better than dividends. It, in this sp specific case, growth again, outpaces dividends for that particular investor. Let's move on. Are you a risk taker? There's two types of investors. There's risk takers and there's those that are a little more risk averse. I fall kind of in the middle actually. I do take some risk, but that being said, I, I'm generally more risk averse. Kind of in the middle, but more skewing towards risk averse. Look, growth investing carries more risk with it. And with more risk, sometimes comes more reward. And the risk is that one is often buying companies at very high PE multiples. I did a video, by the way, on the PE ratio. I'll link to it in the description below if you wanna learn more about that. Very, very high PE multiples, but you're betting on the future growth, future earnings growth. In my opinion, that's more risky than buying a dividend growth stock at a deep discount, reasonable PE, high starting yield, paying me a dividend cash flow every year. It's more risky. Are you a risk taker? Maybe you like risk. Maybe you like that kind of thing. You like the thrill of it, or it's just aligned with your persona and you're willing to take the risk. Because again, you're, you're not looking to use that money for 30 years. If that's you, again, dividend or growth stocks may be better for you. It may be better than dividend stocks here. Last, are you a really young person? If you're really young, 
maybe maybe growth stocks are are just more advantageous from the standpoint that you've got many years ahead many investing years and when people are younger it's usually a good time in life or a reasonable time in life to take a little more risk I still consider myself to be relatively young. That said, I'm a family man. I have two young children, amazing, beautiful wife, and I have a lot of responsibilities. I have a lot of responsibilities. And so for me, I'm not in this young bucket anymore, although I still do consider myself quite, quite young. But if one is a little bit older, and they're, um, they're a little bit more risk averse. They just can't afford to take on that risk. That falls more in the dividend camp. Now, that being said, the dividend camp also appeals to young people who want early financial freedom. There are very young people out there who are basically traveling the world living off of dividends. There are people out there who have already done this. And that's not me, by the way. I live in the Silicon Valley where it's incredibly expensive. And so I'm not going to be doing any geo arbitrage here. I'm going to live here. I love it here. And I'm just going to build a massive amount of cash flow to pay for it all. So that's kind of my strategy. Very different than other people. But anyways, there's young people too doing dividends because they can do the geo arbitrage and they can retire really young. Not me, but I respect it. I respect it a lot. But anyways, it may make sense if someone's real young, they've got a lot of years ahead, they really get this stuff, they just get it, and they've got that ironclad conviction that, hey, I'm with this 30, 40 years out, 50 years out, I'm going to buy and hold this Apple and see where it's at in 50 years, and I don't need the cash flow because I want to work all of those years, it may make sense. It may make sense to go the growth route. And so that's really the comparison today. I have a lot of respect for growth investors. For me, certainly what I don't have as much respect for is the active trading. Look, anyone's making money in the market, I respect for them. But like I, what I guess what I'm trying to say is that active trading, I've done it very rarely. Bitcoin was an example. It was just advantageous. But I didn't expect that to happen. In fact, I thought I was gonna hold my Bitcoin five years or so and then sell it, get a nice profit. I didn't expect it to skyrocket. And so it was an active trade because it had to be because it skyrocketed. Did a video about this, I'll link in the description below. But anyways, I guess what I'm saying today is if I, if I had to be a growth investor, let's say someone said, Ian, you cannot invest in dividends. You have to be a growth investor. How would I invest in growth stocks? It would be like this. This is the type of growth investing that makes the most sense to me. And I think for certain types of people, certain personas who agree with assumption, have these goals, like these pros and cons, they really respect the pros here, they make sense to them, this could be for you. And so, look, Dividend investing channel, I love dividends. You'll see over a hundred videos on it now. I can't get enough of them. And so I'm not changing my strategy, but I wanted to provide this because I know many of you, you're trying to figure it out. And some people may fall in the middle. Let's say 50% of their portfolio is gonna be growth, 50% dividends. That works too. But if you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to figure out, should it be all growth, all dividends, somewhere in the middle? Ian, I know you're all dividends, but I don't know if it's for me. I wanna provide an alternative here. I wanna provide an alternative that I respect a lot and that I think could fit a lot of people. So anyways, thanks for, um, for this uh, suggestion. This was a subscriber suggestion. It was really kind of coming out of a bunch of comments that came from some of my recent videos. And so I thank you. You want me to talk about anything here related to investing, just share it in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas. Thank you so much for being here today. If you liked the video, please give it a uh, like, a thumbs up, a subscription, a comment. It means the world to me and I can't wait. I'm at 8,000 subscribers now. I wanna reach my 10,000. That was my goal for 2018. So it means the world to me. It's the greatest way you can thank me. Before I leave today, full disclosure, I own uh, Pfizer ticker symbol PFE. That's a stock that I own in my portfolio. Now that I've shared that with all of you, I hope to um, review it in one of my future videos here. It'll be a fun one to review. Also, in terms of disclaimer, I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video is not investment advice. This video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult your licensed financial advisor first. Thanks so much. I will see you in the next video.